प्रोफेसर डी पी अग्रवाल चेयरमैन यूपीएससी भी नारायण स्वामी मिनिस्टर इन द प्राइम मिनिस्टर्स ऑफिस पर्सनल पब्लिक ग्रीवेंस एंड पेंशन श्रीमती राजदान मेम्बर यूपीएससी डिस्टिंग्विस्ड मेम्बर्स ऑफ द यूपीएससी श्रीमती संजीवनी कुट्टी एडिशनल सेक्रेटरी यूपीएससी डिस्टिंग्विस्ड पार्टिसिपेंट्स लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन इट्स इंडीड ए प्रिविलेज फॉर मी टू बी प्रेजेंट एमिट्स दिस वेरी डिस्टिंग्विस्ड गैदरिंग to deliver the foundation day lecture on the union public service commission i am glad to have this opportunity to share some of my perceptions about governance and public service on this occasion occasionally i had the privilege while addressing the various academy including the lal bahadur shastri academy at mysore or the taxation academy at nagpur foreign services academy at delhi and also in other academies to share some of my perceptions with the administration and especially the good governance a professionally managed public service is the edifice of the good governance and responsive public service delivery the need for an autonomous body to create merit based civil services was felt even long before the independence the background note which has been circulated and all of you are fully aware of it in one way the indianization of the civil service began practically from the very beginning of our national movement and it was one of the most important element in the early stages of our approach through various memoranda submitted to the governor general or the visiting dignitaries on behalf of the crown in those days initially the movement was given momentum by a member belonging to the civil service Sir Surendranath Banerjee, who was a member of the Indian Civil Service, for some reason he was dispensed with his services when he was assistant magistrate in Assam. Later on, he became a great political agitator and presided over the 12th session of the Indian National Congress. at pune in 1895 but before that he established an organization which was known as indian association in 1876 one of the primary objective of this association was which had its branches not only in eastern india or central india but as far as lahore and in various other areas one of the principal objective was to have rapid indianization of indian civil service it was open to competition even from the indians in 1853 but if i remember correctly the first indian civil servant was recruited in 1890 1869 Satyendranath Tagore elder brother of Rabindranath Tagore who had this distinction and indian civil servants they not only built up the architecture of the modern civil service 
in India. But they also led not only the Indian members but also the foreign members of the service. They led very powerful movement of national reconstructions, national reawakening and rediscovering the oldest civilization in India. In that context, I deeply appreciate the efforts made by UPSC four years ago to organize this Foundation Day lecture and appropriate subjects are being chosen. Of course, I would like to be excused. I am not the competent person to speak on this issue because my experiences in the public service are limited in the sense that I was a part of the political executive over several decades, no doubt, not continuously, but not the technically competent or have that type of experiences which many of you have. But nonetheless, I thought that it would be a good opportunity for me to share some of my perceptions with this very distinguished gathering. The first Public Service Commission was set up in 1926 after a good deal of efforts. Various commissions were established including the Royal Commission in 1915 whose reports were placed available and released in 1917. Thereafter, through the constitutional reforms, starting from Montague Chemsport reforms in 1919, to finally the Government of India Act 1935. These necessities of establishing an authority which will impartially recruit and conduct the public services were recognized. The first chairman was Sir Rose Baker, Barker. The Commission had limited advisory function. Subsequently, Federal Public Service Commission was set up under the Government of India Act 1935. Though many provisions, particularly the federalism of the Government of India Act 1935 was not implemented at the centre, it was applicable only to the states, but many provisions, including these, was implemented. It contained provision for formation of Public Service Commission at the provincial levels, after India attained independence, the Union Public Service Commission was set up under Article 355 of the Constitution. The Constituent Assembly played a dominant and visionary role in granting the constitutional status of UPSC. As it realized the importance of having an autonomous body to provide for public administration, best on professionally managed cadets of civil service. Speaking of the importance of this body, while participating in the Constituent Assembly debate, Pandit Sridhoinath Kunjuru observed, and I quote, its object, as has been stated by several speakers, is to secure for the state efficient public servants who will serve all people equally and will always watch over the interests of all communities and the state as a whole." Unquote. The UPSC is a nursery of the administrative ethics. It is the alma mater for selection of the men and women of excellence as officers in the service of the nation. Its role in human resources management of the government is crucial as it has to recommend the best candidates from amongst the millions of aspirants. Over the years, UPSC has helped create a civil service which is diverse and representative reflecting the pluralistic ethos of our country. 
and here if we look at the figures we will find how upsc from the very beginning was particular in choosing the meritorious candidates and refused to compromise on quality 1950-51 which consisted of the period from 26 january 50 to 31st march 1951 total applications received were 24680 candidates interviewed were 3383 and finally recommended 2780 how enormous the number has increased but how upsc is rigorously maintaining the quality could be found from the in <coughs> application received in 2012-13 23 lakh 66,873, just from 24,000 to 23 lakhs, more than 100 times. But candidates interviewed from these 23 lakh applications were 6,990. Candidates finally recommended 5,088. that speaks of the emphasis laid by upsc on the merit and selection process ladies and gentlemen the civil services play the vital role of reinforcing our democratic values it also functions as an instrument of economic growth and social changes it assists the government in formulating and implementing policies for national development the tasks and challenges of the nation building requires close interaction and cooperation between the civil service and the people it underlines the need for civil services to be foremost in their commitment towards the people here in this case i would like to take you back even to the debate which was prevalent at the time of the independence and adoption of the constitution pandit jawaharlal nehru publicly expressed of course before assuming the office of prime minister she against the contribution of the indian civil service but when the moment came for the taking the final decision it was not his views it was the views of sardar ballabh bhai patel who was home minister and great unifier of india he pointed out that only a bad workman quarrels with his tools those persons who have contributed in building up the empire and served their colonial masters they will be the most effective instrument in building new india there were of course another school of thought but ultimately the views of sardar ballabh bhai patel prevailed and if we look back perhaps we can say with great satisfaction the civil servants were trained to protect the interest of the empire built up steel plants in india hydel powers in india community development projects in india created the finest institution of diplomacy apart from the important organization of comptroller and auditor general which was of course initiated by the british government from 1862 itself by passing an act therefore the short point which i am trying to drive at that with the help of these instruments we can transform the society and the importance of impartiality 
बिकॉज पोलिटिकल एग्जीक्यूटिव कम एंड गो बट दर्मानेंट सिविल सर्वेंट्स हू कॉन्स्टिट्यूट द कोर ऑफ द एग्जीक्यूटिव फंक्शनिंग एंड अथॉरिटी दे सर्व फॉर मोर देन थर्टी थर्टी फाइव इयर्स 